This channel has been going for about two months now, and I'm really happy to see all the discussion it's generated. I've had loads of comments and interactions with the videos that I've published. People seem pretty interested in topics like technical coaching, approval testing, refactoring, and how to learn test-driven development. In this video, I want to take the chance to respond directly to some of the things you've said. Perhaps I'll feature one of your comments. I hope you'll continue to comment on future videos. It helps me to keep it real and relevant. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer and technical coach. On my channel, I talk about topics like technical coaching and approval testing and the skills you need to avoid technical debt and learn test-driven development. If you like what you see, please hit like and subscribe. Are we rolling already? Wow, so I've had so many comments. I don't know where to start. Lots of people are so positive, it's really cool. It's like Willem here has just said, good stuff with proper motivation. Alberto has just said, good stuff. Craig has just said, this is great. It never occurred to me to approach approval tests this way. It really does encourage me to keep going and make more interesting content for this channel. Let's go to the Gilded Rose. That was like the first video and it's been very popular. Okay, so somebody's asking here about the Gilded Rose. Would it be suitable for using in a learning hour? The Gilded Rose Carter is, is a really good one and I have used it in lots of learning hours. So it is suitable, but it's, there's a lot to it. You can really pick out different aspects to focus on. You can't get everything in just one. So uh, I do recommend you try that out. It's another good comment on this video here. I did this Carter with my team. It wasn't nearly as bad as the code we came up with ourselves. And the Gilded Rose code is really bad, so I don't want to see his team's code. Do I want to get into detailed discussions about approval testing? So my video where I was talking about what I regret not saying in my interview with Dave Farley about approval testing, that got quite a lot of engagement. So I've got a comment here about the approval testing I showed. Although you can clearly use approval testing with code like this as demonstrated, I think that really the core of the argument is whether it's worth doing in preference to or in addition to a next unit style test. And then he goes on to, to try and talk about why you might do that. I think I didn't make this clear enough in my video, but I see it as a complement to X unit styles tests. So if your units are really small and your code is really well designed and has small units, then X unit style tests work brilliantly. But uh, where approval tests really shine is, is when you've got larger chunks of code, um, a bigger piece that you're trying to test that does more things and you need to assert more things at the end. So a multi-line string that checks several things is going to be helpful. I think it's a good thing to have in your toolkit alongside X unit style tests. I like this comment on that video as well. It said, I've certainly suffered from approving too large XML JSON or manual prints, and there's no way you can approve them safely when they're too big. But your usage of printers are just super exemplary, and I thoroughly love the story abstraction. And if Dave doesn't change his mind now, I don't know who can make him. So uh, I'm really happy about that because the person who's made this comment has clearly understood both the problem of too big output files and the solution that I showed with the printer. So that's really encouraging. I did a video recently about the Parrot refactoring Carter. And I've got a comment here who's, somebody's clearly watched this video and been inspired. They said, I was hesitant about changing the exercise for tomorrow's eighth session of my first three-week Saman cycle with one team I'm coaching. I think I'm using this one. Firstly, I'm so happy that this person is actually doing Saman coaching and that they're finding interesting material on this channel. Parrot Carter, I'm sure, will be a really fun exercise for this team. So uh, I hope there are lots of technical coaches watching this thinking, oh, I could use that. I kind of feel that if we, as technical coaches, all share our materials, we'll all have an opportunity to do a better job and that will just grow more opportunities for all of us. So uh, yeah, happy coding and happy coaching. One of my videos is uh, where I'm coaching Lauren, uh, actually showing what it's like when I'm technically coaching somebody to write better code. And I've got another technical coach here who's asked, asked her a question here. Do you remember the duration of this one-on-one -on -one coaching session? Um, it could give me an idea of how many things can happen in this kind of time box. So that's a great question and very concrete. Now, Lauren and I booked just one hour for a video meeting to go through this uh, coaching session. 
And uh, the first part we were you know, saying hello and, and setting up the camera and stuff. So probably the actual coaching was something like 45, 50 minutes. And you, you can see in the video how far we got with the tennis refactoring in that time. I think an hour is quite a good length for a coaching session. Um, you've got time to get something done. You can, you can write some code and, and learn something. And it's not so long that you get exhausted and, and can no longer take in new information. Or, of course, a, a guided learning hour. Um, it's very deliberately chosen. An, an hour is something you can fit into your day. And actually, there is enough time to achieve something. And, you know, you don't get too tired. So I encourage you to try that first before you adjust and see what works for you. I've got a comment here on my video. TDD training courses don't work. Try this instead. And of course, I'm trying to be a bit provoking with the title. And there's a, a technical coach here pointing out, it was really helpful, this video, to explain the shortcomings of typical training courses. But perhaps a little bit more differentiated presentation could be even more helpful. I would argue that a workshop is perfectly fine to gain knowledge about TDD and learn about different techniques but you cannot establish the habit of actually doing TDD in these sessions. And of course, learning to handle the challenges to do TDD in a real world code base cannot be simulated in a workshop. He suggests that the title should have been TDD training courses alone don't work. Well, that wouldn't have been nearly as snappy. So uh, I'm quite happy with the title I chose. And, it, and it's true, I think um, that the courses don't work because of these reasons. And, and Stefan is quite right to say these things, but you can learn about TDD and learn why you might want to learn it and what are the techniques and, and what is it you need to practice. But I still think you need to put in that practice yourself and get some help in your production code before it's going to stick and actually work. What else should I comment on? My recent video about ChatGPT and Copilot are not refactoring tools also generated quite a few comments. Yes, understanding our tools and when to use each one is extremely important. So using IntelliJ tools myself and only a few basics, so I need to learn to practice and use it to speed up the process. That's exactly what I was hoping you'd take away. Learn to use the tools you have better, and that's going to be better investment of your time, I think, than trying to persuade these Copilot and ChatGPT to do refactoring. You've got better tools for that. I did a video just now that was called if somebody was doing test-driven development, how would you tell? And this has also generated some comments. I'm, I'm going to contrast two of them. So there's one here saying, this is amazing, Emily. I agree that this can still be a kind of TDD. You still have the fast feedback loop and you have the expected value written beforehand in your head. And then you verify if the result matched and approve if yes. So I think that qualifies it. And you're from Gothenburg, right? Maybe we could call this the Gothenburg School of TDD. I'm not sure I'm ready to name my own school of TDD yet, but uh, I'm happy that Marco agrees with me that this is TDD. Another coach is not quite so uh, convinced. Gregor has commented here, the tests are not exactly driving, but safeguarding. So I would argue this is not TDD. However, it is a good workflow in its own right that has similarities with TDD and the fast feedback loop makes it extremely valuable. So I'm happy, Gregor, that you can see value in this approach, but I'm, I, I, know, I still think it's TDD. But maybe you're right, the tests are not driving the design in the normal way that you'd expect. So uh, yeah, I think this is making for a good discussion. Thank you so much for your points of view. What great comments and suggestions. And I hope you found some useful answers here from me in this video. Oh. Perhaps you're still not satisfied and you have more to say. Well, I hope you'll speak your mind and keep the discussion going, either here in the comments section for this video or on social media generally. I really value all of your engagement and support on my YouTube journey.